So that last um, um, example is really all about understanding design ranges. What is the range of effect? What are you trying to achieve? How much dynamic quality are you wanting to convey? If you're working with a two-dimensional motif, what that ultimately um, is tied to is how the surface will perform once you start folding, right? If you're talking about a 3D component, it's how much deformation will the component register in 3D, right? And ultimately, um, how it will unfold and be fabricatable. All right, so you can do that using the point attraction, right? And you can also do that by just taking advantage of surfaces and actually populating the components between them. So let's take a couple of uh, minutes real quick um, to see if you have any questions um, about the topics that we've covered so far. Now, it's actually pretty um, amazing <laughs> that we're able to cover this much content in just two and a half hours. And largely, um, I'd have to say it, it, it is about the tool. It's about the quality of the tool and the quality of the environment through which you're able to use the tool. Right? So these really complex um, um, kind of formal um, uh, qualities are easily accessible. And ultimately what that means is that it um, you know, opens up uh, the time that you have to design and be uh, critical of what you're making and, and, and have more informed design decisions as you move through the process. Um, now, a uh, question that came through was, you know, whether or not there are even more ways to, to kind of modulate the grids and, and use other types of geometry to create grids. I have to say yes, <laughs> absolutely. Um, there are lots and lots of really neat things you can do in paneling tools. Um, this first uh, course is really about exposing you to the uh, way in which paneling tools is related to uh, grid-based modeling specifically through the lens of folding. Um, but there are ways that you can use paneling tools to also generate uh, data for FEM analysis. Um, we've used paneling tools um, in our subdivision modeling uh, uh, workshops before, where we actually use it to populate mesh components for smoothing. Um, so lots and lots of opportunities um, for how it can be used and um, a really, really um, great tool. Now, from here, where do you go next? Well, there are a lot of cool references, resources, and upcoming events um, to help you capitalize and really take advantage on this new set of um, techniques and skills that you have at your disposal. The first one is this beautiful book called Folding Techniques for Designers. Um, it's uh, published by Lawrence King uh, Publishing and um, written by Paul Jackson. So it's called From Sheets to Form. And um, I hope that resonates with you, uh, considering the fact that we were working with these two-dimensional motifs and the idea being that the form would really be a byproduct um, of the activation of those um, various uh, motifs through folding and creasing. Um, the book is, is really fantastic. Uh, the outline, or the layout rather, is, is like this, pretty much. It, it's a lot of action kind of images showing um, you know, how the folding works and how to, um, to activate the surfaces. Uh, um, there are also really nice diagrams um, to show uh, the different motifs and what they can yield and, and what the various surfaces that come about from those motifs are good for structurally, um, et cetera. Um, here you can see uh, one of the more complex uh, folding patterns uh, and its ability to be very flexible in one axis, um, actually in two axes, um, but rigid in another. Um, there are also some fantastic tools um, for origami simulation that can be used. Um, so if, for instance, you're developing uh, a, a set of two-dimensional patterns, um, 2D motifs, you can actually, using the um, freeform um, origami uh, tool, um, simulate what that folded surface would be like before actually folding it, right? So that's a really great tool for um, actually knowing a little bit about what might happen from the things that you're um, designing in 2D uh, and then ultimately um, producing a more thorough and rigorous uh, workflow as you're working in paneling tools, um, folding surfaces, uh, et cetera. 
And another tool that's really quite great is the, um, orig I think it's called the orig origami -izer, <laughs> origamizer, <laughs> um, which allows you to take any object, um, regardless really of its complexity, and flatten it into uh, origami templates or folding templates. Uh, this is a really neat tool. Um, it's I, I don't know when it's last been updated, uh, but I, I think that it's still being updated. The uh, Freeform Origami tool, just as recent as two weeks ago, I believe, uh, was updated, so it is being uh, developed. Uh, and the last one is the Rigid Origami Simulator, which is another really nice um, tool to take a look at when you have some time. Um, all three of these tools can be found um, at the web address uh, that we've included here. And for inspiration, um, definitely take a look at this site, Pleat Farm. Um, it's great. They update it all the time, um, post lots of really interesting uh, images from fashion, architecture, product and industrial design, lighting, um, you name it, um, they'll cover it if it's pleated. Uh, so it's definitely a cool resource for inspiration to see what's going on uh, in the uh, community that is uh, surrounding kind of pleated and, and folded form. Now, some of the upcoming events that we have going on here at Mode Collective, um, organic modeling. We will be uh, doing a course with T-splines for Rhino that will be um, taking advantage of some of the workflows of uh, Grasshopper um, as a, a geometry creator for lines and how lines can then be formed into continuous organic structures um, using T-splines. We'll also work through some other workflows of um, how to uh, to um, pick up on some of the tools that um, you're probably comfortable with in Rhino, but really push it to the next level um, using T-splines. Uh, generative assemblies, this is a constraint-based component design and digital fabrication workshop um, that we're, we will be hosting here in New York City um, at our studio. So if you're going to find yourself in uh, New York or if you're in this region, definitely swing by and check it out. Um, it's going to be really great. We have in our studio uh, quite a few digital fabrication machines and uh, in the workshops we, we're constantly uh, using the machines throughout the entire weekend. Now um, our online courses, um, our course library is growing <laughs> fast and we will be adding um, a host of new instructors um, that will also be introducing some more diverse content to um, our library um, course catalog. Um, so we invite you to definitely take a look at um, what we have here and if you have suggestions for things that you'd like to learn more about, we're always open to suggestions and would love to hear from you. So I want to say thank you for attending. Um, really had a great time this afternoon sharing some of these ideas, sharing some of these techniques with you. Um, the use of paneling tools is something I'm quite fond of. I love the fact that you can get up and running so quickly. Um, and I like um, its relationship to uh, digital fabrication processes and the way that it can really be tied to um, tangible output. Um, so from the, from the webinar, uh, from the course this afternoon, if you find yourself making some models, if you find yourself working on some prototypes, definitely send us some images. We'd love to see what you're up to. Um, and you can always connect with us on Facebook um, and sign up for our newsletter um, through Facebook um, or on our site. Here's our Facebook, back, backslash Mood Collective. Um, so you can always post a question or a comment here. This, um, we do update this uh, quite often. Um, about six times a day. <laughs> so there's tons of stuff on here. You can get an idea of the various things that we're looking at, what we're watching, things we're up to, what our friends are up to, who our uh, people in our network are up to, et cetera, et cetera. We really like to share all of the various things that we're, um, we're into with our community. Um, and again, this is Mode Lab. Um, feel free to um, swing by, check it out um, even more. We're adding more content all the time. Um, so we look forward to um, working with you again in the future. So I'm going to leave the, uh, the broadcast open for a little bit. Um, and if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to post them. Um, Gil and I are here. We'd be more than happy to answer any questions you have um, about the content that we covered today. And um, if not, uh, then we hope to see you next time. So thanks again for joining us this afternoon. And um, we look forward to working with you again.